Hi everybody, this is the super delayed Japan vlog that I meant to do and uh, it's for Tokyo and I can say that 100% I had such a great time over there um, mainly because I'm a social person and I finally had people to hang out with and spend time with. One of the things that made my trip super great was that I had met a cosplay group on Instagram who liked Digimon as much as I did and they invited me to basically come do a photo shoot with them and uh, it was like a, a stunning experience. I, I've never been more excited because it's such a like a niche anime, at least where I'm from. Uh, it's like a childhood thing, but he, like I just went above and beyond. So um, they invited me out and we had a, a 5 a.m. photo shoot and did karaoke the night before. We literally rented out a room and then stayed there the entire night until we were ready to shoot. Um, cosplaying, by the way, in Japan is not really um, acceptable in public and the biggest reason for that is it's really crowded uh, and if everybody did it, which it's very accessible to do it, um, then they would have trouble controlling crowds and like controlling obstructions and it seems silly but it makes total sense once you're there. Uh, so we had to again shoot at 5 a.m. and keep it on the down low. We went to Adaiba, which is where all the Digi guys are from, and uh, I'm like even just like super excited talking about it. Oh my god. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Uh, beyond that, I also stayed in a hostel, um, and a hostel that was good for backpackers. So again, if you're social like me, um, then I recommend you stay at K Hostel. It's in a district of Tokyo called Asakusa, but the Japanese call it Asakusa, which make sure you say that, because if you say Asakusa, no one knows where you're going, because um, the U is apparently silent in some situations in their grammar. Uh, but in any case, uh, I met people there and I had a really great time. They showed me a good night, like these people that I met at the hostel. Um, in other kind of situations, if you're not a social person, you can choose any hostel in Japan. They're all well organized and they're probably just as, like, they're, they're like a hotel room, but essentially a shared hotel room. Um, versus other hostels are generally, they're kind of like lower end. If you're exploring, it's a good place to sleep and put your stuff. But uh, yeah, K Hostel was very comforting, and I stayed in another hostel called Satan Hostel, which was again very organized, but just not not, not my jam. Um, I went to Harajuku, which is the kind of like fashion street in Japan, and that's actually where I bought this really cool um, sweater. Actually, no, I didn't buy it. It was a freebie because I spent a lot of money that I shouldn't have spent. This is Harajuku, and we were gonna find cake here. Here we go in the pink district I have ever been in. Kind of boring footage, but I mean, there's a skeleton there. Sweet box crate. Look at the Daiso. Holy. It's exactly as you would expect it to be. <laughs> like, adorable. This is adorable. Shopping here is a national sport, I swear to But the shopkeepers were all very amused by my presence because I'm a really big person and Japanese people are generally not that big. So their change rooms, I had to like stand like this. Which by the way, if you're going to try on clothes in Japan, wear slip-on shoes. Do not wear lace-up shoes. I had Doc Martens, which are lace-up shoes. It was a pain in the butt to take them off, put them on, take them off, put them on. So just get slippers, get some sort of flip-flops, something that slides on and in and whatever easily. Um, the shop itself I'll leave a link down below for because it is so cool. It's got punk clothing and uh, they were, again, they were just stellar people there. I also had met a designer by accident uh, named Yellow and if you are a J-Rock fan, she's got pictures of all the J-Rock stars that she served and autographs like decorating the inside of her store. She's got a lot of really cool pieces and that though is on the higher end. It's like one of those things that you got to invest in. Again, I was there by accident and I was just like, you know what? F life because I had such a shitty time before, I'm just gonna spend all my money. Um, I also, you know, notice that each district has its own kind of flair. If you're in Shinjuku, it's like a clubby, like business district by day. If you're in Shibuya, that's the big crosswalk. You can watch people. There are a lot of like little uh, shops, like, well, little, little shops in big size. So, like, there's a Starbucks, there's a Disney store that's like three levels. Um, there are really cool. I'm gonna call it like Japanese Walmart, but go to Don Quixote. Don Quixote has a penguin on it. It's like the first two levels are like just kind of bad quality goods and then you keep going up and it's amazing. There's like everything, everything that you could possibly want is in Don Quixote and you're gonna save a lot of money if you go there. So Don Quixote, like just like when I was in London, I'm like, 
I should have freaking found Tesla like way sooner. And in America, it's Walmart or Target. Here or here, I'm in Canada. In Japan, it is Don Quixote. Go to Don Quixote. Um, I had the privilege of going to some cultural festivals, and those are really cool. See dancers in mass. Again, just they have so much people, and they're so organized, so everything's just like precision heavy. <laughs> I went to Tsukiji Market, so if you are a seafood lover like me and can binge eat sashimi, go to Tsukiji Market. It's kind of dingy in the way that it looks, but it's got a lot of things to try, like a lot of free samples of things. It's not just fish, there are other products, um, but I had raw tuna, I had caviar, I had scallops, I had uh, uni, which is like sea urchin. I had so many things and I just stuffed myself full and had like the best food experience for seafood ever. All the buildings here are really run down and it's full of tourists. I mean, like, yes, I am too, but we're trying to find the fish market without the tourists. Here's the safer version of the market where you're not going to get that run over. Or the market. There. Yeah. Here we go. We can go inside there. Yeah. Get some fish. These guys are just going to take pictures of sushi. I have found my favorite place in the world. Look at all this tuna. Different kinds of tuna. Total medium red tuna maguro. Okay, I was way too busy eating to show you what it looks like complete, but this is like the best tuna I've ever had. It's like, if you don't like fish, you're still gonna like this because it doesn't taste fishy. The texture might throw you off. Hi. Inside. Inside? Okay. Thank you. Get it. You're not really supposed to eat street side, so you go inside places like this, where there's places to sit down. Mm -hmm. If I die, please bring my body here so that I may enjoy all the food in the afterlife. There's like sushi everywhere. Like everywhere. I've already spent 20 bucks. But I mean, like, look, more sushi, the best ever. Hi, look at all you can eat. I got one in there too. Experience. Um, you can also get by with limited Japanese, which is really good for me because I could not speak Japanese. By the end of the trip, I learned, like I had to, I couldn't rely on English anymore. Um, but it was just helpful to have signage and to have a train system where you could read it and get to where you needed to go. Um, I also checked out Akihabura, which is a famous street for anime. If you are going there, do not go to the shops around the train station. Go blocks out because if you do that, your goods are going to start getting cheaper and there's going to be more variety. Because what was happening a lot of the time is I would walk in a store and um, when I was in there, a lot of the stuff was just very generic and very expensive. They have like animes that are also plague animes in Japan, like they're really into idol girls. And I would say that the environment is more catered towards males, like male anime fans, because you get that kind of like over-sexualized, big boo girl kind of style. And for me, it's not a, not a thing I like. I like character goods, which are like keychains and I don't know, like a plate or a painting or whatever, but it's more like doujinshis and CDs and DVDs and special anniversary stuff that happens within the first stores that you you see in that district. Um, 
you can go to Animate. Animate is like a seven level anime store and on the last two levels there are cosplay goods you can buy that are actually generally like well priced. There's contacts, there's like ties of every color, there are base cosplays that are like affordable because I mean if you're a cosplayer you understand that it's about $120 for an outfit or at least it is in Canadian currency. Um, at, in Japanese or in the Japanese yen currency it was 50,000 yen which translates to about $50 Canadian so from going from 120 to 50 is actually like quite a good deal and you won't get it complete but it's the complete outfit and then you can accessorize. Um, there's also a cafe over there. Uh, you do have to look online to book a time um, and reserve but you get like themed waffles and themed drinks according to whatever anime they're featuring. Um, you can also if you're if you want to be less touristy, go instead to Nakano Broadway, because Nakano Broadway is a shopping district with anime in it, but there is, it's at a cheaper price and there's more like kind of, not avant-garde goods, but like more like niche market goods versus what's popular. Um, they're starting to finally recognize female anime fans, like the ones that like, like BL stuff and uh, um, like sports animes and things like that where it's all like bishaman uh, and there are entire sections dedicated to it. I think it's kind of shitty that they have signs that say like four boys, four girls because that's kind of dumb but uh, you know it is what it is and at least you're gonna find an anime good that you like um, and it's well organized. Sorry I'm gonna say that again. Japanese people well organized. Um, in any case, the thing that I found really odd was there are, are floors that you can go in anime stores that are male only, and that was interesting uh, to just like see a sign and be like, oh, I guess I'm not allowed here. Uh, and I don't know what's on those floors. I think I I can venture a guess because I was with two guys and I kind of just decided to go up to all the levels once, and I think they gave me a strange look. But I'm like again a big person, so no Japanese person is gonna go up to me and just be like, uh, oh, get out of my shop because. They know that they could get a fight out of it. Uh, or a good push. In any case, no, I wouldn't do that. But, um, yeah, so there were some places that females can go into, technically speaking. I did go into a sex shop. That was really cool. Seven level sex shop. Got some stuff out of there. Because I'm me, and I do things, and that's what I like. And in any case, uh, there was just a lot to see and a lot to do. Make sure you center your trip around a couple things and then go versus just winging it like you can but there are really cool places like the robot cafe that will cost you like 50 bucks admission or it's like 50 to 70 and then you have to pay for drinks and then you have to pay for food so it's like measure out what you want to do your big things and then you can like, always explore and find little things each district is really cool really unique it's easy to get around and 100 percent i just recommend tokyo save up your money it's reasonably priced for an urban center so if you were coming to Vancouver, Japan and Vancouver are very like well balanced as far as the cost of food and the cost of staying somewhere. Uh, they're, they're very comparable. Sorry, I shouldn't say well balanced. They're very comparable. So for me, I wasn't surprised. But a lot of backpackers who are used to cheaper prices like from Laos or Thailand, uh, or sorry, not Thailand's a whole country, Bangkok, um, or Cambodia. I'm just naming countries and like mixing them with cities. I'm so sorry. But uh, in any case, yeah, amazing trip in Tokyo. Just a lot better than the last end of it. And even if you're alone, again, so many things to do. So 100% recommending Tokyo. And in any case, thank you for listening on the. Thank you for listening to me ramble real fast. I'm gonna go.